Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And yeah, my phone, my email, my messages have been blowing up in the last couple of days about Lightburn version 2.0 and some of the issues that people have been having. And this happens every time there's a new release of Lightburn that comes out. So I wanted to take a minute today and discuss, first off, we'll talk about some of the fixes that I found. I did a, a video a while back on Lightburn called Disaster Recovery and File Organization. I will put a link down below in the description. Click on the little dot 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 more to open up the description and I'll have links to a couple other videos down there for you uh, on Lightburn. And if you followed my file organization and disaster prevention video, you have no problem with any upgrade of Lightburn software. And if you do have a problem, you'll be able to fix it in a few seconds. So let's talk about some of the issues or the repeating issues that I've been hearing about. And the first one is the screen looks different, the icons are bigger and so forth. So let's jump into Lightburn 2.0 and take a look and see what the difference is. If we come up here to the gear icon and click on that and come over to display, one of the th new things on here you'll see is enable high DPI scaling. And that requires a, a restart of Lightburn. That comes ticked on by default. So if you're having a problem where the icons are larger than they should be, turn that off. Just tick this off and then click OK and restart Lightburn. Now, I'm going to leave it on for now because it works fine on my screen. Another thing, too, that you can do is you can come over here to Toolbar Icon Size and just move this slider. If When I move this slider, you'll see the icons change size. Watch. So I can make them smaller, which this is. Normal is how I use Lightburn. But when I do these videos, I put it just a little bit bigger, larger like that. So you can actually see it change in real time. You can also change the font size for all of the fonts that are embedded in the software. So I keep mine usually at 14, but if I wanted, I could make them 16 or, you know, higher or lower. So I'm just going to leave mine at 14. And then, of course, you have this new selection in Lightburn where you can do uh, classic dark, system theme classic light classic light and dark i usually work now with version 2.0 in classic dark but i'm going to leave it in light because that works better for making these videos so that you can see my screen better so i'm just going to cancel this right now but that is one of the problems that people are having and the second problem that i've run across with people is this color palette down at the bottom disappearing. You can usually fix that by clicking on window and then clicking to reset to default layout. That will usually fix it. In some machines, if you come up here to the top, you make the window smaller and then larger again, usually laptops, that will reset that uh, color palette down at the bottom. If we move our mouse way to the left of this black zero zero layer over here, you'll see it changes into four arrows. So we can, once it changes, you can click, drag, bring it out onto your screen, place it wherever you want. If it happens to keep disappearing on you, you can even place it really close to down there. Or what I like to tell people is drag it over to the left next to this toolbar over here. Now don't drag it onto that toolbar because that would make it too small, but right next to that toolbar, you see how it lights up in, in blue? If I let it go there, I'm missing some layers at the bottom, but there is a down arrow right here. So if I click that down arrow, I can get to any of my layers. Now if I move off of this area right here, it'll disappear. So if you click the down arrow and move off to the right, you're going to say, hey, that's a problem. <laughs> and it's not really. Click the down arrow, stay within this box right here, go to whatever layer that you want. 
I prefer having this down at the bottom where it belongs. You can put it anywhere that you like and you can do the same thing with any of the other tabs that are on here. Now I've uh, noticed that in version 2.0, laptops work a little bit better with it. So it's still not perfect. You may have a problem if you drag out one of these tabs and then bring it back, it may not dock. When you do drag these out, you have to drag it back until you see the layer below turn blue in order to dock it. My laptop really didn't have this issue. I tried on my wife's laptop and it did have the issue, but I was able to get it in there. And on my wife's, what I had to do, it never did turn blue. It just got to this point right here where it was still white underneath. And I just double clicked it like that. If yours doesn't turn blue, try laying it right over it and then double clicking this title bar right here. And that should dock it back in place. This is meant to be a really quick video today just on the couple of little issues that people have been having. The biggest issue I've seen so far is that they've lost all of their settings. Uh, they've lost their tabs, they've lost their material library, you know, things like this. So that's why I'm directing you in the beginning of this to disaster recovery. But I'll give you a quick tip here now. If you've lost a lot of your different settings in Lightburn, what you can do is you can come up here to File, come down here to Preferences, and then come over to Load Preferences Backup. Now, yeah, it's a brand new install, but you've already been using Lightburn. You may have been using 1.7 uh, when you did your upgrade or earlier, but Lightburn still has those backups. So if I click on Load Prefs Backup, I have to do a new file. So we have to click New first and then do File, Preferences, Load Prefs Backup. Uh, I just installed this a few days ago on this laptop, but I can go drag this up and go all the way back to almost a year ago. So right here is uh, September 23rd, 2024. On my other computer, it goes back over uh, almost a year. So that's, how long is that? That's a lot more than six months, seven months, something like that, worth of backups that are in here. And if you look over here, it'll tell you what devices were installed at the time. So let's come down to 7.8. And when I click on 7.8, you'll see that I have all the same devices in here. But this also saves all of my settings. So all I have to do is click on that and click load and a second later you see the screen just changed and I'm now back to all of the settings that I had on that particular day. I can come back here again, go to load prefs backup and I can choose earlier today and say load and now I'm back to earlier today. So if something is not working in Lightburn, you can always load your preferences back up and Lightburn does this automatically for you. These are the issues I've been hearing constantly for the last few days since I released the last version 2.0 video. And I wanted to address these because so many people are, <laughs> are talking about it. So now why the issues? Uh, it's not the software. I'm going to take a shot in the dark, I guess based on experience. I've had issues with lots of software programs in the past, and it's usually because of the operating system. And I'll give you an example. During the Lightburn version 2.0, I was next door in the laser lab on a different computer, and I drew out a square. And I'll show you what I did right here. So I did a rectangle, drew it out, and it was on the black layer. And then what I did was I came down here with it selected. I clicked on the red layer and the black layer was still there. And I scratched my head and I said, gee, what, why would it do that? There's really no known reason for it to do that. You see the black layer disappeared here. I thought to myself, oh, well, it's got to be a bug. And then I said, well, it can't be a bug because, you know, I've installed this on another machine. I had it on my laptop. It didn't have that issue. And then a few hours after I made the video, 
I looked down in the system tray of the computer and there was that little restart icon in there that said updates were ready to be installed. So uh, this has happened before to me with other software programs where you're trying to get it to do something that it normally does without any problem whatsoever. And all of a sudden it stops working. Well, I've always found, uh, you know, being retired from the IT industry and knowing that 98% of the support requests that would come in in the IT industry are either user error or uh, machine error. Well, the first thing that you should always do is restart your computer. So when I restarted that machine next door in the laser lab, it did the updates. And you want to restart. You don't want to shut down. So a lot of people, they talk about cold shutdowns. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but in Windows, if you do a shutdown, it stores everything that you're doing currently into memory. So a shutdown does not help you when it comes to software issues. So make sure that you do a restart, which clears all of the memory from your machine and gives you a brand new work area. So after the restart in the laser lab, uh, I tried to reproduce the same problem and it didn't reproduce. Windows, when it downloads updates automatically and prepares them to install, it sometimes plays with these background services and it may pause a background service that'll interrupt whatever you're doing in your software. So I always tell people the same thing. Make sure you don't have any Windows updates pending. Make sure you restart your machine if you have an issue and usually that's going to resolve your problem. So I just wanted to take a few minutes today and cover some of the questions that I've been getting the same questions over and over again. And uh, hopefully this will solve any problems that you're having with upgrading. So in conclusion, um, follow my rules of thumb for upgrading and installing software. So number one, make sure you have a clean canvas for your operating system. Restart your machine. Number two, make backups. It's really easy in Lightburn to make a backup. Number three, create a bundle. And if you watch that video down below in the description, you're going to find out how to create a bundle where you can save all of your files, all of your libraries, all of your settings, everything all in one place where if you get a new computer, you can transfer them in seconds and have a, a completely familiar light burn screen in front of you on your new computer in just a few seconds. And number four, make sure that your operating system is always up to date. Take a few minutes if you haven't already. Go watch that file organization and disaster recovery video because if you do, you will never have another issue in Lightburn. I promise you. <laughs> So uh, that I think that's probably one of the most important videos that I've ever made as far as Lightburn is concerned. And it doesn't have the amount of views that I expected it would, even though it solves all problems in Lightburn. I hope I covered the most talked about topics uh, on the forums and on Facebook and some of the other places today. And please don't yell and shout at Lightburn Software when they make a post about version 2.0 because chances are you'll just look silly because they'll answer you with a, a real answer. And if you do have issues that you can't seem to solve, rather than blast them online, just send an email to support at lightburnsoftware.com and one of the technicians will be glad to help you and they do respond to those emails rather quickly. So uh, rather than blast them online, shoot them an email, let them help you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.